Okay, so you should be able to see the palette and the painting. And the first thing I'm going to do is block in the background pretty quickly. It is a dark gray. In the image, it looks uh, darker than that. But after our conversations about composition, one of the things to be aware of is that you don't want to put the darkest values in the background. It'll tend to flatten things out. So I can always darken this more later. But first, what I'm going to do, um, and there are a couple things like I, to make sure that there was some overlap between the apple and the bag, I did move the bag over about a quarter of an inch. And the blocking in is, um, I can keep the paint pretty thin. It'll dry faster if it's thin. In fact, even adding water to it while it's thin, it will, it will dry faster. So the water doesn't slow down the drying too much. And all I want to do is get a first pass. It's a pretty, a pretty decent approximation. And if you find yourself like leaving little hairs from the brushes, pick the hairs up now. They're harder when the paint is dry. So if you see any hairs getting stuck in the paint, do that. And then if the paint is starting to dry, just add a little water to it as you go. Um, and the reason we're using pretty good brushes, so the brushes that you got for this class are pretty decent quality. And one of the reasons is because you can both push, so I can push paint and I can pull paint with that and not do damage to the brush. Really cheap brushes will not be able, will not allow you to pull paint. So that really limits you in a lot of ways. Uh, also, you guys are not working quite as crowded of a desktop. I've got computers and lamps and have to, for videotaping, have to have very bright lights. Okay, and edge quality kind of matters. So if it's a clean edge, clean, sharp edge, go ahead and paint a clean, sharp edge. Paint the shapes right up to one another. Don't leave gaps between the forms. Particularly with acrylics, there's no need to because they're gonna dry pretty quickly. So you don't need to leave that space that you might've been leaving in watercolor when you were waiting for things to dry. You'll notice if I'm changing the way that I'm holding the brush, it helps me, like as you're working, you can change the angle of your, the way that you're holding the brush and it'll help you to create certain, certain edges and shapes. The other thing you can do is move the panel itself. So if something is easier to paint by moving the panel, just move the panel. I'll try to do that as little as possible because you guys are, are following me on video. But if we were in the class, I probably would just be holding this in my hand for the first little while. Um, one of the other things then, of course, about that is make sure that you have on pink clothing. So uh, if you're doing this with an apron on, then you can, um, you're going to find that you have a little bit more flexibility. Okay, so the next thing when I'm looking over here about the next thing is the same value. So while I've got this color paint about the next thing is that the shadow on this side, the really dark shadow over here on the reference is similarly dark. So what I want to try to do is just block in a few of the things that are similar value. And value is the word we're using for black and white or dark and light. So, and I'm using the filbert brush that was spec for you. You can tell it's a filbert because it's got this rounded shape. The other brushes you have are all flats. Now acrylics will reward you for painting quickly because um, I guess that Actually, what they'll do is they'll punish you for painting slowly. So I guess the absence of punishment is a reward. But you want to paint pretty fast. And that's one of the reasons why you did an underpainting. Is it's a lot easier to do that. And then I'm not just looking at this and, and filling it in like a 
coloring book. If there are mistakes in this, and there are a couple of things that I know I'm going to be fixing. So if there are mistakes in this, I want to fix them while I'm painting. I don't want to just keep telling the, um, telling myself it's all going to be all right. It's, it's up to me to make it work. So one of the good or bad things about painting is it is a lesson in, uh, responsibility. There's no one to blame for my bad work except me. So if I don't like the painting, it's really tough for me to uh, find anybody else. Now, um, as soon as I get over here, like this is a similarly dark value. So I can check that by mixing into that. And I can see that this area right through here is similarly dark as is the bottom of that bag. but the rest of the shape is going to be a different gray. And I want to just, even at the blocking in stage, I want to be aware of that. And then that the, the apple here, one of the reasons we didn't want to go all the way to the darkest dark is the darker colors should be in the painting. So I'm going to make this dark part of the shadow since we know that the shadow uh, is in the foreground, right? It's in, in front of us right there. So I'm going to make that shadow a little bit darker, particularly in close to the apple. That's, um, it's close to the occlusion and that will be the handout that you guys will be getting for, for study this weekend will be on light logic. Okay. And then there'll be a quiz on light logic. Light logic being one of the more important concepts that we get into in this first little section. Uh, so the first week or two of the modules, so next week, color wheel um, and light logic. So we'll be getting into that. Now you can keep the colors pretty chunky. As you can see, I don't need to be, I'm not, I'm not being too fussy about this, but I do want to be um, accurate. So I'm not trying to uh, worry too much. Just want to make sure that it's about like that. Okay, and now I'm moving into a slightly lighter gray. The rest of this shadow shape that comes up to the bag. Bag angles up just the tiniest bit like that. And it's a little bit lighter gray. There's light bouncing off of the other bag and the apple. There's light bouncing around in here, so that's lightening up the, the area. And that's also one of the things that I needed to fix was that I brought the edge the corner of this bag in just a little too far. So I'm going to move that in just a bit. Okay. And you see that the underpainting didn't need to be perfect. Doesn't need to be perfect. Generally doesn't have to be perfect, which is good because I'm not perfect. Okay, so now I've got those in and now I can start to look at a couple things. Like I know that the bottom of this bag, like right through here, is just a little bit darker than the shadow beneath it. And I wanna paint that right up to it. Cause the only way to tell uh, the color's real identity is when it touches the other color. And you can see that acrylics are a little bit transparent. For some people, that's a great thing. For others, it's kind of annoying. I find it um, somewhere in between. Sometimes I'm a little annoyed with it, but in general, it's a good thing. It just means that you'll be painting everything at least twice. On the second pass, these colors get more opaque. Okay, then the rest of that set of the bag is a little lighter. I'll, I'll finesse those things, but it's lighter than the background.
And you can see that this gray, because it has a little bit more white in it, is more opaque. So black is less opaque than white. The white is the most opaque color we have on this particular palette. It's between black and white. So between black and white, black is more transparent than white. Again, all I'm trying to do is block in the big shapes. And um, I'm a little bit hungry, so my hands are a little shaky. So that's another one of the reasons why you want to eat. Not only will it help your mood, which is important, painting can be irritating. but it'll keep your hands from shaking as much. Okay, so I'm just blocking in the light and dark shapes a little bit, and I can lighten some of the other areas, but I think that's close enough. And continuing with those dark forms, coming around this side of the apple, this entire side of the bag is in shadow, and the bottom part is again slightly darker than what's around it. So I'm going to mix up a color. So I'm just mixing a little bit of black into that gray. I could be using any brush since I'm just blocking in. Okay, and the rest of this bag is a lighter color. This, well, the rest of this side of the bag is a lighter color, so see all of this. It's a little bit lighter. And with acrylics, uh, we'll, we'll look at, over the course of the next week or two, we'll look at four different ways to mix colors. Because you can do blends um, several ways. So there isn't any one right way. But for right now, I just want you to do your best. Uh, obviously, if we spent all 18 weeks just discussing painting, we could learn a lot about painting, but we wouldn't get any painting done. So we're going to jump in and understand that you won't know everything quite yet, but you'll be on your way and you'll have the beginning. So again, just like in the just like in the watercolors, what I'm doing is I am blocking in just the shadows. So all I'm doing is laying in the shadow shapes and I don't need to be precise, just need to be pretty close. And um, I'm gonna have to make a decision since I lightened that background, I'll have to make a decision. There's a little hair got stuck in there. Um, I'll have to make a decision about whether I want this bag to be lighter or darker than the background. Uh, I think for the sake of of the assignment, I'm going to have the bag be a little bit lighter since it is lighter in the reference. There is a little bit of light catching that edge, so I'm going to leave that edge. It's called a buried line. So when you paint everything but the line, it's called a buried line. Uh, the shadows are blocked in. 
So now I'm going to make a very quick pass of the lighter forms um, that are in semi-shadow. So there is some light here. The light side of the apple, which is, I think, a little lighter than this, but we're going to just make one quick pass here. So that's a really quick block in. Um, and as I said, I'd be making some adjustments. So I think the first adjustment, like once I make this pass, is to lighten this. Is to lighten that just a little bit. So it still fades toward darker as it comes down here, but not quite so dark. And so that's just a little lighter in the background. Okay. And one of the ways that you can uh, adjust an edge is just use a little bit of water. So you can, um, you can water something down just like you would with watercolor. One of the reasons why watercolor and acrylic make a really good um, learning team is because you can just use water to uh, dilute the acrylics and certainly for the first pass that's good enough. Okay so what I've done is blocked in the shadows, I've differentiated the light side of the apple from the shadow side of the apple. Um, this tabletop uh, for the most part, so over in here, there's a little sliver of the tabletop showing, which is a little darker. Okay, so that would be a first pass. Then I'm gonna clean up my brush. I'm gonna clean my brush by stirring it in water. Pretty aggressively, little real quick figure eights work well. You can see there's not much paint in it. I can tell because no paint comes off there. So what I don't want is chunks of paint on the brush. If the brush is already clean here, then I can just go to the sink and wash it. Okay. So if your brush is, if you're picking up paint on your brush, so if you're leaving chunks like that, uh, don't go to the sink and wash it. Instead, keep rinsing it in your work water until it's clean. And then go and rinse this out, clean this out. And when the brush water goes clean, then you're ready to take the brush to the sink. Okay, so you can take this. It doesn't have any big chunks of paint in it, right? So make sure there are no chunks of paint, right? There are no chunks. Good. Okay, that you can throw in the sink um, or you can throw it in a bucket. So we'll be, for the most part this term, we'll be just throwing this in a bucket. I have a waste water bucket right here. I'll be throwing that in the bucket. Okay, then I've cleaned water. So the second time through, my brush runs clean, the water runs clean. 
nothing's coming off, so I can put that brush away. All right, and then I can dump this water on the palette. I can use one of the palette knives. I just want to make sure that all the paint is underwater. And what I want are no chunks of paint. So I'm turning this into paint soup. Okay, and then I'm going to dump this in the bucket as well. So that goes into the bucket. And then I'm going to fill it up again with water or I can wipe it out with a paper towel. A nice clean palette and a fresh new paper towel. All right, so the painting now shows the dark and light pattern. These areas will be very light. These areas will be very dark and a few areas will be a gray in between. So that's where we are. That makes a good first pass. The second pass, what I'll do is clarify and improve those relationships, nail this down a little bit. So we work from general big marks to little marks. One of the nice things is if we like the big marks, like if I get this right, at this pass, we leave that alone. That, some of that nice, bold looseness is fantastic. In this case, it's just black and white. So finding the right gray means if it's a little too light, <coughs> move down. So that's one of the reasons why the orientation is up and down on the palette is because that's the way colors are oriented. White is at the top in our conversation and on our color wheel palette. Okay, that's it. And now I'm all set up and clean and ready to paint next time.